Hi, I'm Dr. Zuckerman. Well, actually, now I'm Dr. Zuckerman. These are certainly unusual times, as we've all experienced. But here at NYU, as well as New York in general, and certainly in the United States, we've all made accommodations. Here at NYU Orthopedics, we value education. We value education at every level, from medical students to our residency program, to our fellowship programs, and even for practicing orthopedic surgeons who also join us during the year for CME courses, as well as in hospital experiences. Welcome to NYU Langone Orthopedics and the Department of Orthopedic Surgery. Thank you. Hello, my name is Eric Strauss, and I'm the program director of the residency training program at the NYU Langone Orthopedic Hospital. Hi, I'm Mara Karamidopoulos. I'm the Associate Program Director at the NYU Langone Orthopedic Hospital. I'm Rand Schwarzkopf, and I'm the Associate Program Director as well. What we'd like to do is give you all a bit of information about the education and training that occurs here at the NYU Langone Orthopedic Hospital. While normally many of you would be able to experience firsthand with a visiting medical student rotation, COVID has forced us to change our plans. So here we're gonna share with you some information about the educational environment and what it's like to be a resident training here at NYU. We hope you enjoy our presentation and we're always available if any questions arise. Hello, I'm Dr. Mara Karamitopoulos. I'd like to welcome you to NYU Langone Orthopedics. I'm one of the associate program directors in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery. You can see here pictures of our current training sites. Our residents go to many locations, including the Langone Orthopedic Hospital, the main Tisch Hospital, the brand new Kimmel Hospital, which is right next to Tisch, as well as Bellevue, NYU Brooklyn, and Jamaica Hospital in Queens. We're the largest training program in the country with a total of 72 residents. We're an academic program in an urban environment, and we're also a fairly formal program. The best part about our program, if you ask any of the attendings, is our residents. We take a very smart, wonderful to work with, fun group with a lot of integrity and commitment both to taking care of patients and also to having fun as evidenced by these pictures. In terms of our didactic education, we have three one-hour lectures each Wednesday to which all the residents are required to attend. We go through the AAOS curriculum. We also have team conferences and journal clubs that are divisionally based throughout the week. So in summary, we are a large urban academic training program. We're exceptionally resident focused with a very close knit group of residents. We definitely work hard, but play hard too. We value diversity. We have a strong support network and a dedicated faculty who are focused on education and training. I hope this has been a helpful primer to give you a little bit of information about our training program. Please feel free to watch the rest of the videos on the platform and to reach out to any of us in the program should you have any questions that aren't answered here. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Nina. I'm one of the current interns, soon to be R2s, depending on when you're watching this video. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what the intern year schedule is like and what sort of rotations you can expect at an intern year here at NYU. Uh, so our intern year we rotate every four weeks and it's a mixture of on-service and off-service rotations. Luckily uh, we spend a, at least half of the year on service which is great. You get a mixture of all the different clinical sites so you'll be at Tisch, at Kimmel, at Bellevue, LOH and then most but not everyone will get a chance to be at the VA and at Jamaica Hospital in Queens. So our on-service rotations that you can expect to do would be uh, Bellevue Orthopedic Service, which you'll do one to two times per year depending on the schedule. A team or B team are joint service rotations. Fracture team, which is primarily located at Tisch Kimmel. The Jamaica 
orthopedic service and the VA orthopedic service. And then off service rotations include the emergency department at Bellevue, the hand plastics rotation at Bellevue, Bellevue trauma surgery, which is more like a general surgery service. And we do an ICU rotation at LOH, which is more like ICU light, um, since not a ton of high acuity patients are really being treated at LOH, um, and then VA general surgery. So in the last year, the major change that was made to the intern schedule was that we eliminated our pediatrics rotations, and you'll now do fracture more, likely more than once throughout the year, um, which is a, a good thing for, for we think for you guys, um, since the fracture rotation tended to be more demanding, and now with two interns on the service, it will make the shifts a bit shorter. And since you're doing it more often, you'll likely get more consult experience, which is oh, never a bad thing. Um, so different blocks, you can expect to do different things. Um, so our more operative heavy blocks would be A team, B team. You're basically in the OR almost every single day, aside from the clinic days, which is only once a week. Um, VA ortho, you get to operate a good amount um, of joints and also some sports cases and some hand cases. And then depending on what time of the year you do your ICU rotation, you may be pulled to cover some cases as well. So that can get you in the OR a little bit. The other ortho rotations are more when you'll see consults with the R2s, which is awesome because as it gets further in the year, you want to try to absorb as much as you can. All of our residents are always very willing to teach and, and show you different things. Um, so when you're on fracture, when you're at Jamaica, those are consult heavy blocks. When you're on hand plastics, which is an off service rotation, you are actually functioning as the consult resident. Um, so it's your first time to get take in-house call um, and it's a really great experience. And then depending on when you do VA ortho, you would also be the consult resident there. Although the VA tends to see much less uh, consult volume. Um, so I hope that that gives you a little bit of an idea of what your intern year is like in terms of scheduling. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks, everyone. Hi, I'm Christina Herrero. I'm a PGY2, soon to be PGY3, in the orthopedic surgery department at NYU Langone Hospital. I am going to talk to you all about the increased responsibility and subsequent increased level of comfort throughout the PGY2 year. The biggest jump from PGY1 to PGY2 year is on-call responsibilities. Throughout our second year, we cover a variety of sites, including an acute walk-in clinic, as well as level one, level two, and level three orthopedic trauma hospitals. At every one of these sites, you have different types of teams and senior resident support and backup, but as the R2, you are the frontline orthopedic physician who is initially seeing, triaging, stabilizing, and diagnosing the acute orthopedic injuries. I'll touch on each of our sites, the general R2 responsibilities, and the kind of support system you have. For me, it was very reassuring that regardless of the level of trauma and acuity of problems I would be faced with, I knew there was always someone I could call if needed, even if it was 2 o'clock in the morning. So our first, our first site, our lowest acuity level site is eye care, which is our walk-in clinic. And as the R2, you staff this site with an ED attending. You see mainly minor sprains and fractures that are treat and release type of injuries. Our next site is our VA hospital. This is a level three trauma hospital. It's lower volume and lower acuity, but as the R2, you are the main uh, resident taking call. You do share your call responsibility with other R2s and threes, so you have enough nights off. Our next site is the Tisch Hospital. This is the main hospital and the main ED we see patients at. This is level two and definitely our busiest site as a second year consult resident. Here you're taking all orthopedic call, all hands call, and a small amount of uh, spine call. You have a lot of experience with pediatric orthopedic consults here, upper and lower extremity fractures and dislocations. And as our volume has grown, there is now an intern who's going to be in-house to always lend a extra set of hands for consults. Our final site is our most difficult but also most rewarding site and this is our level one orthopedic trauma at Jamaica Queens Hospital. Here you're going to see high energy trauma, open fractures, and motor vehicle accidents. No matter where you start at these different sites, you get more comfortable with your consults and your procedures, so you need to call in your senior less and less. The biggest thing to remember as an R2 is that no matter how much you prepare for your call, you'll definitely have moments of self-doubt and feelings of being overwhelmed on your first nights on call when you have 
a lot of different patients who need your care. But at every single site, there are seniors and multiple systems in place to ensure that you have the resources and the support that you need to fully care for your patients. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Gotland and I am one of the orthopedic chief residents here at NYU. I would like to tell you a little bit about the experience as a senior resident at our program. The jump from third to fourth year is a big one. As a fourth year resident, you run the orthopedic surgery service at the VA at NYU Brooklyn. It's a great way to develop the skills and confidence to be able to manage orthopedic patients on your service. You will be responsible for all the inpatients, all the surgical bookings, and will go over consults with the junior residents on a daily basis. Fourth year is also loaded with subspecialty rotations like trauma, sports medicine, pediatrics, spine surgery, and adult reconstruction. On these rotations, you truly take a big step forward in terms of your operative autonomy and skill set. During the fourth year, there are a lot of group sessions with faculty and chief residents to go over fellowship applications to make sure everything is set for the process. Our attendings are extremely well connected in the orthopedic community and the fellowship application process is pretty seamless. One of the major highlights of Chief Year is the Bellevue and the Jamaica Orthopedic Trauma Service. These are both extremely busy level one trauma centers and the service is nearly entirely resident run. You manage the inpatient service and oversee the clinics. The operative experience at these places is also fantastic. You have a tremendous amount of autonomy and get to walk the junior residents through cases. As a chief, you also do pediatrics, sports medicine, trauma at Langone Orthopedic Hospital, and arthroplasty. During our arthroplasty rotation, we spend a lot of time with our chairman, Dr. Zuckerman, which is an invaluable experience. It's a rotation that every resident looks forward to, and it truly culminates the five-year journey. Recently, we have also built in about three months of elective time during our chief year. This gives the chief residents an opportunity to scrub with their mentors and spend time with them in the private office. It also allows them to scrub any interesting cases and polish off any rust before they head to fellowship. The senior resident experience at NYU has truly been structured to mold us into the most confident and competent surgeons we could be. We pride ourselves on the finished product and I believe we finish residency as prepared as possible for clinical practice. Thank you and I hope to see you soon. Overall, you got a great experience, especially as a senior resident. By the end of your fourth year, you'll have gone through all your rotations. You get a lot of autonomy um, as a senior resident, but at the same time, there is an appropriate amount of supervision, especially for the more complex cases. You get great trauma experience at our three level one trauma centers. And as a senior resident, you're not only expected to do the straightforward bread and butter cases on your own, but you should be able to walk a junior through them. We obviously get a lot of reps doing joints cases at our program. And most, if not all of us, have done standard total knee and hip replacements from start to finish. As a fourth year, you also rotate through pediatrics, spine, tumor, and foot and ankle. During these rotations, you're almost always the only person scrubbing with the attendings. And depending on how comfortable you are, uh, most of the time you're the one doing the cases and the attendings are there just to help if you run into any issues. Most importantly, I think the program does a great job teaching you the best way to prepare for your cases. You'll learn the best approach to use, which implants and retractors you'll need, how to set up the OR, the best post-op protocol, uh, things that you'll need to know when you're eventually working on your own. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Moses and I'm one of the current R3s here at NYU. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of different aspects about our orthopedic surgery residency program. I think that the faculty here is very invested in resident education and mentorship. They're always available to talk about cases and are willing to talk about their pearls and techniques for surgical procedures. I also think that the residents here are a great group to work with. We get along and we're all willing to help each other. And there's a great mentorship model for the senior and junior residents as well. Lastly, coming here, you would get to live in the greatest city in the world, New York City. There's so much to do. There's a ton of art, culture, great food, and 
possibilities are really endless. Hope you enjoy NYU. My name is Blake Schultz and I'm a fourth year resident. One of the best things about NYU is the breadth of exposure you get. With such a large department, the OR board is like a buffet, full of interesting cases to seek out and fill up on. You get consistent exposure to unique pathology and cutting edge techniques that you just don't get anywhere else. Another benefit of the large department is a strong and devoted alumni network. This was on full display during my fellowship application process, where every stop involved either an interview with an NYU alum or a funny story about one. I have no doubt that this affected my match and will continue to be a strong and supportive network for me going forward in my career. Hey, my name is Ajay Kanakamanala, I'm one of the third years here at NYU. Uh, I just finished up second year and wanted to give you an idea of what second year here is like. So second year here is awesome. Um, it's a year where you, you know, you're starting to do a lot more, you're, you're functioning as a console resident, seeing consoles independently, coming up with your own plan. Uh, that being said, it's nice that you, you know, there's always a senior that you can call if you have any questions. Um, and so it's a really good, it's a really good atmosphere to learn in, in seeing basic orthopedic consults. Um, it's also a year where you start to ha get a lot more autonomy in the OR. Um, you know, there are increased expectations of you as a PGY2. You know, attendings expect you to have a pre-op plan, um, you know, going into a case, but that's a good, that's a good thing because, you know, if you have a plan, you know what you're doing, you know, that oftentimes will be your case to do skin to skin. Um, so just to kind of go into the blocks, um, the rotations that we have. So we have seven rotations, and so I'll kind of just go through them one by one. Uh, so the first is, you know, everyone, we, we do a joint replacement rotation. We call it A or B team, depending on the attendings that you're working with. Um, and that rotation is awesome. Um, one thing that um, really changed about it that was good was that, you know, they took into account resident feedback that we wanted to have more of a mentorship model and have some consistency in who we were working with. And so they changed it so that now those rotations are really a mentorship model, which is awesome because, you know, during my 18 block, I knew exactly who I was going to be with every day of the week. Over the block, you know, it was a graduated experience where at the beginning you're doing the approach, some of the cuts, and then by the end, you know, the attending was just letting me fly. As long as you know all the steps and everything, you know, he'd been working with you for many weeks, and you know, those are your cases to do skin to skin. Um, another thing that's nice about the joints blocks here is that, you know, typically speaking, a lot of the attendings, now that we have so much, so many ORs, is that a lot of the attendings are getting two rooms. And so it's nice because if they have a fellow in you, it's usually the fellow in has their room and you have your room. And it's not like you're, you know, just there holding cook for the fellow. And so again, even as a two, you know, you're, you're getting to do a lot of cases skin to skin. So the joint block here is, is really a great experience. Um, the next block is the VA block. Uh, so the VA block is awesome. There's no in-house call. As the two, you're pretty much you're there to operate. And, you know, there's a PGY4 there, but a lot of those cases, you know, they've done and they're really there just to help walk you through those cases. And so it's it's a really great block. And Dr. Orton, Dr. Desmond, or two of the attendings we work with there were fantastic. They're like the nicest people in the world. And so that block is just, um, it's just one of the blocks that we always, that we really look forward to. Um, next uh, are the fracture, is a fracture block. Uh, so this block is one of the, um, the, the rotations where you start to get a lot more in-house uh, consult experience. And it's awesome because, you know, you're seeing, finally seeing consults, you know, making, making you know, bones straight again and doing everything that, you know, you came to residency to do. And it's, it's a great experience to learn. And they have a really good didactic system where they have, you know, fracture conferences every week so you can review cases and everything. And so it's, um, it's a good block. And it's also, it's really where you learn a lot of your bread and butter orthopedics. Um, next is the PEDS block. Uh, so one of the things I really love about the PEDS block is that uh, the PEDS department ha has basically come up with a fantastic curriculum that um, they have kind of an eight week curriculum that you go through through the entire rotation. And, you know, there's an attending teaching a topic to you every week. And it's awesome because every, you know, by the end of the block, you've kind of really covered a lot of the bread and butter PEDS um, topics and everything. And so, you know, in addition to getting into the OR and stuff, you know, that's obviously important and clinic is important too, but having that a really good curriculum, I think really goes a long way and makes that rotation um, always a really good experience for everyone. Uh, next is the spine block. I think one of the key defining points of the spine block that says a lot about this program is that it's the residents um, making the schedule for the spine block. It's not the fellows, it's the residents making the schedule. They're never a double score behind a, behind a fellow. It's always, you know, you one-on-one -on -one with an attending, which is, you know, really sums up what, kind of why that rotation, I think, is a really good a good experience compared to, you know, spine blocks at, at other places. Uh, next is the sports block. Um, so this is another block that's really become a mentorship model. Um, and it's really made the block awesome uh, for us because, again, it's, uh, you know, Dr. Berg's one of the shoulder tanks we work with on that block. And he does a lot of shoulder scopes and total shoulder replacements. And it's nice because you're beginning of the block, you're doing a diagnostic scope. And then by the end, you're kind of doing a more, you know, kind of putting suture anchors and everything. And same thing with total shoulders. You know, at the beginning, you're doing part of the approach. And by the end, you're, you know, you're doing, doing some of the bony work. Um, so those are all of our rotations in a nutshell. Uh, we look forward to having you here and you know, don't hesitate to reach out uh, if you have any questions. Take care.